at some point in your woodworking endeavours, you are going to face tear out. What is tear out here, you ask? Tear out is when you're taking the final finished shaving on your component and shit hits the fan. It digs in, takes a massive chunk out, and you start reconsidering your choice of hobby. So in this video, I'm going to show you how I prevent such atrocities from happening to my work and hopefully prevent the same from happening to you. Let's get going. So, on my right here, we have a Lee, a Lie Nielsen low angle jack plane, a Lie Nielsen number four smoothing plane, a frog, and on my left here, we have some pink ivory, we have some American black walnut, and we have some bird's eye maple. So, the first thing we're gonna to cover today is grain direction. So, let's get you in close. Okay, so, grain direction. What do I mean by that? Well, as you'd expect, it's the grain direction. So this plank of bird's eye maple I have has lots of lines in it, late wood and early wood. And as we all know, those represent the years in which the tree has been alive. Now the direction that this grain goes is very important. So I'll just draw it on to make it more visible for you. I'm just gonna follow one of them roughly. There we go. So you see with that, there's like a sort of curve on it. That means that this board is going to be relatively difficult to plane. The reason is that as this grain curves, some of the grain is going off the edge like this. Okay, and likewise here, it's going off the edge like this. So it's actually going towards itself. Now, why is this a problem? Now, the easiest way to explain this is actually with a book. So picture what this grain is doing now. It's sort of going off the edge at an angle. If I bend this Tormek book round, you can see on the edge here that the grain of the paper is going up and off the edge at an angle. And this is important because it dictates which direction you should push your hand plane in. So if this chisel was my hand plane blade, look what happens if I go with the grain. It's just skimming over the top and not digging in at all. However, if I go the other way, watch what happens. Chisel is digging straight into it like that. I can't even try and skim it across the top. Look at that, it's done a bit of tear out on the grain. So that is what is happening with this wood here. If I was planing with the grain, like this, so you see it's going off the edge, I can plane like that and that would be fine. However, when I start getting to this bit where the grain is going up towards the plane, it's gonna dig in and it's gonna do exactly what it did to this paper when I get against it like that. So that is grain direction in its basic form. Ideally, when you're edge jointing a bit of wood, you want the grain to sort of go off it like that all at one angle so you can just plane it like that. If any of you have worked with feather boards, this is exactly how they work. You can push a bit of material one way, but then you can't push it the other without it binding. Another way to think of it, if you didn't really understand the book metaphor, is like when you're stroking a cat. You stroke it from head to tail, it purrs beautifully. If you stroke it from tail to head, it turns around and claws your face off. So bear that in mind, because the last thing you want is the wood jumping up and tearing your face off like a cat. This next bit, American black walnut. Now, as you can see, we have got something going a little bit funky on here. Firstly, we've got the knot there, which just isn't easy to plane to start with. And secondly, we have got this crotch or crown figuring going on here. Nightmare to plane again. If we look at the side, it's very difficult to tell which way the grain is going. I can see a little bit going this way. I can see a little bit going that way. In fact, there's a round bit there. There's a bit of tear out here, unsurprisingly. This is not going to be an easy bit to plane, and in fact, it looks like I have tried it in the past. Also, within this bit of wood, we have what is called curly grain, and that is actually where the grain ripples up and down like this. So if you can see along here, there's sort of these horizontal stripes, and along here as well, we've got some stripes going that way. That is the grain going up and down, and it's the light catching it in different ways. So because there's curls going along this edge, that means on here, the grain is doing an S shape like this, all the way along, and that means, how the hell do you plane that like this? I'll see if this grain is all going one way, nice and easy. If it's rippling up and down like that, you have no chance of finding the correct grain direction to plane. So how do you go about reducing that? Well, the answer to that lies with increasing the cutting angle in which your plane is cutting. So let me get this all back to its original positions. So a brief look at the planes we've got here. 
The number four, a standard bench plane, has its blade mounted at 45 degrees to the sole. That you cannot change unless you buy an extra frog for it. The Lionelson low angle jack plane has its blade mounted at 12 degrees to the sole. And you might be wondering, Matt, you just said you had to raise the angle of the blade to reduce tear out. Why have you gone for a low angle plane? Well, the reason for this is because this low angle jack plane actually has the blade mounted with the bevel up on top of it. Whereas on this bench plane, the blade is mounted with the bevel underneath. So I'll show you the difference that makes. Okay, so if I get this blade out, you will see the predicament. So, like I said, bevel on the bottom. How are you going to increase the angle of that blade to the bit of wood? Well, an easy way is to get yourself a new frog. So this one is 55 degrees. Like I said, this one is 45. So this one will just unbolt, pop that one in, done, you're ready to go. However, that's a bit of a faff to do and obviously that costs you a bit of money. So there is an alternative to doing that. The other way of doing it is to actually put a back bevel on the blade. So if I just take this chip breaker off. So if you watch my honing guide video, you may have heard the term back bevel be mentioned in passing. And what that is, is exactly what it sounds. It is a bevel on the back of the blade. So you can think of this as the top because that's where your bevel is. To sharpen a back bevel, you need to sharpen a V into the end of this plane blade. So if you wanted to mimic a 55 degree frog, you just got to do a basic bit of maths. 45 degree frog plus honing a 10 degree angle on the end of this, that will give you the same effect as this frog. But then obviously you're stuck with a permanent back bevel on the end of your plane, which you have to grind off if you want to take to its original position. And also you are having to sharpen not only one bevel, but two bevels. And like I've said in the rest of the series, I don't enjoy sharpening. So that's a bit of a um, pain in the backside for me. So how do I work around that? Well, one way of doing it is to get yourself an extra blade. So have one with a back bevel on it and one with a flat face on it. And that way, if you didn't want to commit to having a permanent back bevel on the end of it, at least you can swap out to your standard blade. But you are still stuck with the fact that if you do want to sharpen that back bevel one, you've got to do two bevels on it. So this is where the low angle jack plane comes in. Let me get that into shot. This is probably the most versatile plane you will ever find. Although this isn't my favorite plane, this is definitely the most versatile. And for people who want to buy their first premium plane, I always throw them to either this or the Veritas low angle jack plane. So like I mentioned earlier, this blade is mounted bevel up. Now you can probably already see the advantage in this. With the bevel up, I can sharpen that to whatever angle I want and I'm not having to put any sort of back bevel on it. The entire cutting angle is dictated by whatever angle you sharpen on the edge of that, plus the 12 degree bedding on it. So with this, if I wanted to mimic the 55 degree frog that would be mounted in the number four, all I need to do is a basic bit of maths. So 12 degrees plus 43 degrees equals 55 degree cutting angle. And if you watch my earlier videos, that is why I have the 40 degree stop on there. See 43, 40, there's not much of a difference between them. I just wanted a nice round number. So if I pop that in there and then sharpen the 40 degree angle on it, the effective pitch of that is 52 degrees. So 40 degree on the blade, 12 degree on the bed. And the advantage to that is that I just have to sharpen the plane blade as I would normally, flatten the back, done, ready to go. So for this plane, I've got a 30 degree blade and I've got a 50 degree blade. I don't really tend to use the 40 degree stop anymore. I think if I'm just going to reduce tear out, I might as well raise that angle as high as possible. So let's go into the sharpening stages. I'm going to show you how I sharpen a 50 degree bevel on here, which will be pretty self-explanatory and I'll kind of skim over it. But I will also show you how I sharpen a back bevel on this plane blade. So let's get this into a sharpening setup. Right, so we're now in sharpening mode. So as always, going to start with flattening my water stones. So I'm gonna start with the 6,000 to start with. So flatten that off on there, start with the 6,000 and then go to the 1,000, the coarser side, so that way you're not contaminating the 6,000 with the grit from the 1,000. So there we go, that is lovely and flat now. Right, so we're gonna start with the blade for the low angle jack plane to start with, because that's the easiest. If you watch my honing guide video, this is the limitation of these long jaws. I'm gonna sharpen this blade to 50 degrees. However, the protrusion on these sticks out too far to allow me to make the blade hit the stop on here. So I'm just gonna quickly switch them back to the standard jaws. Shouldn't take a moment. Okay, there we go. So standard jaws fitted. Now I'm going to pop the blade in there. I'm going to go this way because I'm a lefty. There we go. So get that snugged up in there. And then against the 50 degree stop, 
Now you can see how much that blade is poking out from the honing guide. That's why these jaws are limited because look, you can see that those jaws will poke out beyond the blade. So there we go. Get that snugged up in there. Right, so I'm gonna start drawing the burr now. So we'll start by doing a few strokes back on the 1000 grit. One, two, and that has started drawing a burr on there. I can feel that ever so slightly. Just gonna flip it over. I'm gonna give that a bit more juice. Wipe down the wheel again, just get all that rubbish off it and on this burr as well. So we don't get any grit contamination. Right, so even strokes back to start with. 10 strokes either side. Let's see, four, five, eight, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five on the intermediate points. Two, three, four, five. One, two, three in the middle. There we go. That has put a camber on the edge of the blade. And so I'll probably flip it that way as well. So draw that back onto the stone like that. That way we don't take off the burr too aggressively. And then pop some of this super fine paste on Miss Strop. Now there are links to all of these in the description of the videos. Some of you pointed out that the links don't work in previous videos. I have fixed that now, so we're all good, we're all good. Lift it up until I see the shadow at the end disappear. Drag it back, drag it back a few times. And then on the back as well. Careful not to lift the blade up on this, you wanna keep it perfectly flat on there. This non-slip pad is not working very nicely. It's slipping. Stop slipping. So I'm just working alternatively between the bevel and the flat back. All right, wipe all that off on there, get all the gunk off it. Careful not to stab yourself. And there we go. That is stupidly sharp on there. What that now means, if I mount this into the low angle jack plane, I have a 50 degree blade in there, plus the 12 degree bed angle on this. And that gives me an effective pitch of 62 degrees. And therefore that is now a high angle plane. The only thing I had to change was which stop block I used. So you can see that's why it makes this plane quite versatile. Very easy to change the effective pitch of it. And there we go, nice and simple. Now the next one, back bevels. So if you're working with a standard bench plane, like I said at the start, this bevel is mounted underneath. So we're going to need to sharpen a back bevel on this. Now that means that we obviously have two angles that we need to sharpen. Firstly, this one on the bottom, draw the burr up, and then we need to flatten the burr off this other side and then flip it back around to the other side and slowly remove the burr that way while maintaining that bevel. It's quite a bit more work, which is why the low angle jack plane is easier, but if you don't want to splash out for one of them and you just want to make this work, this is the way to do it. So we're going to pop this in the honing guide again. I'm just going to leave these standard jaws on because I can't be bothered to change them. Get my stop block. We'll start on the 1000 grit again. Give it a bit of juice. There we go. We're going to do a 30 degree bevel to match the secondary bevel that's already existing on this. Start drawing that burr back. One, two, three. Do one more for luck on there. So that has matched my previous angle absolutely perfectly thanks to the stop block. We've started drawing the burr on there. It's gonna do a little bit more because that secondary bevel is getting relatively big. Let's see. Definitely there now. Cool. Flip it over. Well, that looks like it's already started getting a bit of a wear. So I'm just gonna flatten it off again quickly. Just gonna wash this flattening plate off because we just flattened the 1000 with it. Don't wanna be bringing the 1000 to this. All nice and clean. Back and forth on there a few times. You can actually draw pencil marks across the top of this if you wanted to see where this is removing material, but providing you stay on top of it a few strokes, that will be nice and flat. Get all this crap off the wheel again and off the bevel. Right, yeah, it's all right, gunk on there. Right, one, two, three, four, five, six, whoa, seven, eight, nine, ten. Right, started polishing the secondary bevel. I'm just going to do one, two, three, four, five. 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 There we go. So definitely a burr on there now. Right, so with this blade, I want to raise the effective cutting angle to, let's say, 60 degrees. So it's bed at 45. That means I need to add 15 degrees onto the top of that with a bevel. So I don't have a 15 degree stop on here because I haven't got around to making one yet. But what I'm gonna do is instead plug one of these things, a bevel box. They are absolutely brilliant. I use them for everything. So what I'm gonna do, just pop that on here. 
and I'm going to zero that to the stone. Now what this does is it measures angles by gravity. So that is now at zero on this stone. And what I can do, it's magnetic, stick it to here, and then I can just adjust the projection of this until that bevel box reads 15 degrees. 15.2 degrees that is. So that will be close enough for me. Let's get that all snugged up in there. Obviously it would be much more accurate to make yourself a stop block, but that is a very accurate way of doing it. And you can use that for setting up machines and all that as well, where you don't quite trust the scale for maybe the angle on the blade or something like that. Those are indispensable. Absolutely love it. All right, it's back bevel. There we go. So one, two, three. Now instead of just going two over the top on this and really put a massive bevel on this, all I'm gonna do is, now I've drawn the burr back over to this other side, I'm just gonna do five strokes in each point to match the camber that's on this blade already. So one, two, three, four, five. You've got to be really careful doing this because that end is very easy to dig in too far now. You haven't got a lot of reference for this to skim across the stone. So in fact, I did push strokes there. I'm just gonna change that to pull strokes. So one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. And one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so that has put a back bevel on this blade. And I can see that that is very even across the end of it. Very, very even. But we need to take that back and start breaking it off gently. So I'm gonna take it back out the honing guide, and flip it back round to its 30 degree position. So pop that in there, in my honing guide. Here we go, snug it up a bit. Now don't go too over the top with this. You're only removing the burr by this point. If you start doing loads, you're just gonna create an entirely new burr and you're gonna to have to take it off this other side again. If you watched my previous video about getting a stupidly sharp edge on a plane, I mentioned about transferring the pressure from left to right as you're dragging it back and right to left when you're dragging it back. This would be the time to do this. So what we'll do, start with all my pressure here, drag it back. I've transferred it all the way to the right now. And then we'll start on the right and we'll transfer it to the left. There we go. So that burr will be very loose on there. In fact, I can see a very, very fine wiry edge on there and that is the burr becoming loose and is ready to break off on the strop now. So here we go. That paste is still wet enough on there. So lift it up, drag it back. And for the back, don't lift it up too much. There's obviously some flex in the leather here, so you can lift it up a very, very small amount. You could probably keep it flat if you wanted, but I'm going to elevate it a tiny bit. And there we go. So that is now a high angle blade on there. You have to look very closely at the end of that. But what that is going to do is change the effective pitch of this blade where it's bed at 45, and it's cranked it up 15 degrees on the very bevel. And now you have a high angle bench plane without having to change the frog on it. Happy days, happy days. So let's see how this performs now. Right, so firstly, let's see how the low angle jack plane performs on the walnut. Now we'll try this with a standard blade to start with. So just the standard 30 degree blade on there plus the 12 degree bed, 42 degree cutting angle. Right, so firstly, we're gonna try and plane the face of this. Now on the edge here, we've got grain going up like this and we've got grain going up like this. So it's a sort of U shape. Now I'm gonna try this difficult bit to start with. So we're gonna plane this way. And in theory, this should tear out quite a bit with the 30 degree blade. So 30 degree is our standard angle. Let's see how it performs. So I'm gonna start with no cut on there. So that's not taking anything off it. And this has been sharpened exactly the same as I would have sharpened a blade in my video, how to get a stupidly sharp edge on a plane blade. Link in this sort of corner up here. So there we go. So we're gonna bring it out a tiny bit at a time. It's starting to get a little shaving. A bit more. Oh, straight away, right, that dug in. Oh, you see how it's jumping? Like that. Let's cramp it up a little bit more in there. Yeah, that's actually catching on the curly bit on this timber. So let's go a bit more. That is, yeah, it's giving it like a fluffy finish to it. It hasn't torn out as much as I thought it would, but it's not a great finish. Ah, no, we've got some tear out there, actually. Yes, it's torn out there quite considerably, actually. Oh, yeah. So that looks to me like interlocked grain there because it's planing really nicely next to it. But then the next growth ring there is starting to tear out. So interlocked grain right there. Yep, 
horrible tear out. So let's see if we can get rid of that with the 50 degree blade. So I'll take this one out, get this 50 degree in there without nicking the sharp edge I've just put on it. Okay, so that is taking off nothing. It's worth saying I've made the mouth on these as tight as possible. So I'm just going to keep going until I start taking a the shading. There we go. So instantly, see how much easier that is for me to push across? Not catching whatsoever. The shavings are a lot more consistent as well. It's not digging in in certain areas and it's not skimming over the top in certain areas. It's just taking a nice, even cut all the way along the top. It's just... <laughs> The only difficulty with this is that being a 50 degree blade, it is harder to push through the cut because you've got more resistance from that bevel in there. But I'd rather more resistance than hideous terror. So keep going. There we go, right, we're getting rid of that tear up now. Beautiful. So that feels absolutely lovely in that area now. This area here, there is no tear out on it, but it still feels a little bit fluffy. That's just because we were mostly going against the grain. But let's try flip it around and just see if we can sort this area as well, because it'd be unfair to not try it with the grain as well. Oh, lovely. So you see it already changing color here. I'm hoping the camera's gonna pick that up. It's really nice chocolatey brown here, and then it's sort of like a grayish color here. So there we go. That's the importance of grain direction. We'll just keep working this. That'll do half of it and then you can see the difference that it makes. Oh, that is bloody lovely, that. Absolutely lovely. Let's get the camera in close so you can have a look at this. Okay, so this is where the tear out was before and it is now really nice and smooth all the way along there. I've only really worked this half of the timber. That bit there is what was left with the 30 degree blade. So that's a little bit of tear out there. But this is the biggest difference. See up here? That was the difference it makes when we were planing with the grain. And then that is when we were planing against it. So that's when we were planing this way here. So there we go. We'll just continue with that and let's see if we can get rid of this grey bit. Voila, look at that. So you can really clearly see the ripples in the timber now. You see this? So that is where the grain is going up and down like that. And it's catching the light in different ways and those are what is an absolute pain in the ass to plane when you don't have a high angle blade on them but there we go the 50 degree blade has sorted that let's try a different bit of timber now let's try some pink ivory let's get some of that horrible stuff and this has got a bit of wax on it but we'll give it a go we'll give it a go let's get rid of that thank you very much walnuts which was the disgusting side on this yeah there we go that side there has got a lot of uh a lot of curliness on it. Let's see what we can do with that. All right, so there we go. We're going to swap back to the 30 degree blade. Okay, so we've got nothing being taken off at the moment. Taking off the wax for these first few bits. So let's just keep going with that. There we go. All right. Starting to get down to the wood. Oh, it's tearing up there already. I can see that. Look, these shavings look pretty cool there. You might be able to see it, but we're getting bits of tear out here, 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 here. Basically, on all the curly bits where they're going against us. Let's keep going with it. Oh, right, it's catching on that bit there now. Ah, it's like a bit of end grain or something like that. I think we've got a knot there. Overall, it's feeling pretty nice in the middle here, but around these edges, there's a big bit of tear out there, a bit of tear out there and all along there. I'm just gonna give it a little bit more attention to make sure that it's not me. Oh, no, that was definitely definitely the plane digging in there let's take even less off and see if we can fix it with the 30 degree nah it's just digging in this yeah definitely definitely the blade tearing out all over the place there yep right so let's swap it to the 50 degree blade so we're getting still feeling the resistance However, it is cleaning up that corner there. I can see that. Whoa, still fighting me in that corner. Yeah, so the tear out around here is starting to be reduced. That's starting to feel a little bit shiny. It's gonna take a while because the tear out was quite deep on that 30 degree blade, but we'll keep going. We'll see what sort of finish this can give. Tell you what, it's not liking the end grain on the end here. Yeah, smashing that out. 
That is where the low angle plane would be better for this because the low angle of attack would slice through that end grain a lot easier. Whacking it with a 50 degree one, not gonna be easy. Okay, so the 50 degree blade in here, I've given it a while. It has started reducing the tear out here, but this bit here, that grain is going almost vertical. It's so high in there and it's quite a big patch of reversing grain. So this isn't quite doing it. So what I did when I sharpened the back bevel on my bench plane blade, I don't have a spare blade for my smoothing plane. I sharpened it for my jointer plane. <laughs> so it's gonna look a bit weird, but we're gonna see if we can reduce this tear out. Right, so we're going at it a while now, and this corner here is just still tearing out. And I'm putting that down to the fact, you see this is end grain here. This bit is very, very close to end grain. So I think the high angle of the blade is just causing that to tear out. It's just too big of a patch to try and plane against. So if I flip it the other way, however, let's see what it's like if I plane it like that. Ugh. Nope. So pink ivory, horrible, horrible stuff to plane. This stuff in the corner is going all right now because the grain was coming up like this, so I'm now planing with it. However, I've started hitting into lock grain now where it's coming back against me. Right, I'm in a huff now. This is why I left the bird's eye maple till the end because I knew that that pink ivory was not going to be easy. So let's try this bird's eye maple. We're gonna try it on this edge here with all the sort of flecking on it. So let's get a close up on that and um, see what sort of tear out we got. Right, obviously there's so much going on with the grain on this, it's difficult for you to see the tear out. But if you focus on the edge here, you can see that it looks a little bit choppy. So I'll just adjust the focus. There you go, so you see that edge looks a little bit wiry, doesn't look too crisp. That is the tear out that is creating that. So we're gonna see how the 30 degree plane copes with that first, and then we'll switch to the 50 degree plane. And then finally, we'll take it to the jointer with the back bevel. It's also worth saying here, look at the grain on the edge there. So I've got no defined grain direction for that because it is all over the place. And that is what is causing the tear out on there. Right, so pop the 30 degree blade into here again. There we go, right, we're gonna start with absolutely nothing. Skim that across the edge. So this isn't performing too badly, but it does feel a little bit, a little bit grindy for lack of a better word, actually. I can feel that it is hitting all that reversing grain. And yeah, it's producing very, very small amounts of tear out on here. The camera definitely will not pick this up. This will all be down to my feel, unfortunately, but let's just keep going with this. I think the easiest way for you to see where I'm getting this tear out is actually to look at the shavings on this. So if we look at the shaving we just got from it, we're taking pretty much a full width. So that shows that our blade is all fine, but then you've got these little bits here and more considerably here. That is where, oh, that is where we're hitting the tear out. And you, and you can see how crumpled this part of the shaving is compared to the rest of it here. It's only in those points where we're experiencing the tear out that it's really starting to curl up. And that just shows that the grain direction was all over the place in there. And this shaving has been able to release the stress of that. But that is what tear out looks like in a shaving. It wasn't able to take a full width. It might sound out, but that's not what we're looking for in this video. We want that to be a plain finish. So I'm actually gonna to swap to the jointer instead of swapping out that blade because the effective pitch of this jointer is now 60 degrees. So that's a 45 degree frog, 15 degree back bevel. So it's feeling less grindy. These shavings are feeling better. Yeah, right, that's getting better now. Right, this is performing much better. So I'm just gonna keep going with this. Well, that's perfect. There is no tear out in that whatsoever now. And that edge is very sharp, <laughs> very sharp. But let's look at this shaving. Now, like I said before, these have been sharpened exactly the same. Oh, I've just ripped it in half there, oops. So sharpened exactly the same, they've been set up the same. But look, this shaving all the way along, really nice and even. Nice and even there as well, apart from where I ripped it obviously. And that was just the start where the plane was entering into the cut. But otherwise, look how uniform that is. Compared to the one we produced earlier, which is this, you can just feel how brittle it is as well. It's, I can feel that they're very similar thicknesses, but this one is just crunchy, like, yeah, just horrible. Whereas this one just glided straight over that tear out and it is absolutely lovely now. 
Let's try it with a low angle plane with a 50 degree blade fitted just for research purposes. Right, that, <laughs> yeah, that, that just felt so much better on there. So much better instantly. I've got to put a lot of pressure on it to keep it in the cut, but providing I'll just give even pressure, just absolutely lovely on there. You can't really fault that. So let's get the camera in close and you can see how crisp that edge is now compared to earlier. So no torn out patches whatsoever, just really nice and crisp. Obviously the 30 degree blade mounted in the low angle jack plane was not able to do that. It was only the 50 degree that reduced all that tear out, or actually it didn't reduce it, it just eliminated it completely. And we've got a lovely edge on there. And there we go. That is how you reduce tear out in timber. Just simply raise the effective pitch of your blade and it should work absolutely lovely. In some cases, it will completely eliminate it, or in some cases, it will do your absolute nut in and it won't. <laughs> It just will carry on tearing out, but it's going to be a work in progress. Like I say, follow me on Instagram, and in a few weeks' time, I'm gonna give this another attempt. I will also film myself planing this, so I can't get away with sanding it absolutely flat or anything. It's going to be a true test, because that's annoyed me. I wanted this tutorial to go all smoothly. So yeah, follow me on Instagram to see if I can tackle that. Links to all my social media is in the description, as well as links to all of these things that I have on the table here. So this stone, this honing guide, for example. They weren't working in previous videos, but I have fixed it with my IT genius now. So that is all ready to go. But yes, hopefully that video has helped you. I guess I will start clearing up all of this mess now. See you next time.